Hello, my name is Dr. Randy Papke, and today I'm going to be doing a quick demonstration on how to do protein gel electrophoresis. Today we're just going to be doing a simulation of protein gel electrophoresis using different colored dyes. On the screen you see uh, almost a rainbow of colors. We're only going to be using two colors to represent the two different alleles that a gene might make proteins of. So let's get to it. So this is a gel. And what you see is, um, this is this in here is actually the gel. And it was poured into this gel form when the gel was liquid. Kind of like how you make jello. Um, you, you make the jello, it's liquid, and then you pour it into a bowl and it solidifies. Well, that's exactly what this is like. So um, it's solid right now, but um, it was poured into this gel form at one point by a lab tech. And um, in order for the, the gel to stay in place, they had to put this tape around the edges. So we're going to take that tape off before we load this gel. So the first thing that we're going to do is remove this comb. And to remove the comb, we just gently lift it straight up. I'm gonna turn it sideways so it's easier for me to do that. I'll just lift it straight up. You can see right here, the reason why it's called a comb is because it looks like the teeth of a comb, but they're nice and wide. When the gel is liquid, um, this comb is put in to form these wells in the gel. And it's these wells that we're going to be putting our samples into. The next thing that I'm going to do is remove this tape because we want the electricity to be able to run through the gel really easily. So I'll come back in a second with the tape removed. a gel box or an electrophoresis box, and it has a lid on it. Um, we're gonna tape the lid off right now by pushing on these pegs with my thumbs and just lifting up with my fingers, and we're gonna put that to the side. The next thing that we're going to do is put the gel in the gel box, and um, the wells from the gel should be on the black side of the electrode. The DNA, as you can see with this arrow, or the protein, sorry, with this arrow, are going to run that way. So I want the samples to be up close to this side. The next thing that we're going to do is uh, pour in some buffer. This buffer is called TBE buffer and it's basically salt water. This is a pipette and a pipette is really useful for picking up very small amounts of liquid. This is 20 microliters, but pipettes need tips. And so I'm gonna, this is, this is a box full of tips and I'm gonna put the tip on here. If you notice, I'm gonna press down fairly firmly on um, that way that the tip is on there really well. To take the tip off, you push this um, button down here and it shoots the tip off. Now that's not safe. We don't wanna do that. When we take tips off, we want to put them in a safe location. So again, like that. That's how you put a tip on and take a tip off. The next thing that we're going to do is to take in a sample with this pipette. And this is um, a set of samples that we're going to be using. So with the samples, this one happens to be sample number 11. It doesn't ma really matter too much. You take the lid off like this, and then I'm going to press my thumb down till it stops. There's another stop there, but we don't want to go there. We just want to go to this point right here. Once it's down, you put your tip into the liquid and slowly let your thumb withdraw that up. And there's your sample. Now for safety's sake, we're going to put the lid back on and put that to the side. This liquid is weighted, it sinks. So if you put the tip below the water and you slowly depress your tip, you can see that it sinks to the bottom. I'm just gonna take you quickly through how to load a well. Put your tip into the liquid, withdraw your amount, and then put your sample away. Now you're going to want to be very steady and gently plunge your thumb down until all of the liquid is released into that well.
The next thing I'm going to show you is how to put the lid on the box. And we're going to match electrodes, red to red, black to black, so that the electricity flows in the right direction. Just press down firmly, and then we need to put the other end of the electrodes into this electric source, again matching red to red and black to black, pressing in firmly. The next thing that we need to do is turn the electricity on. So now it's on. We've got 200 volts of electricity running through and I've hit the start button. Um, we're going to take a quick look and see that the electricity is flowing through by looking for bubbles floating up from the black electrode area. And it's a success. Let's speed up the process by doing a quick time lapse through what it looks like over the course of about 15 minutes or so. You can see the bands are starting to separate here. And as time goes by a little bit more, you can start to see that there are two distinct color bands. There's the kind of darker blue one towards the top and the more purple ones towards the bottom. And this is the finished product. You can see that there are eight samples here and um, they have different color bands. I just want you to focus for a minute on these three lanes, lane one, lane three, and lane six, because they each tell us different amounts of information. You can see in lane one that there is one kind of big dark blue blob that's perfectly normal. Um, that's one band. It's not very crisp, but that's okay. In lane three, we have a purple band. And again, that's just one band right there. Again, not very crisp, also okay. Um, but look at lane six. Lane six is interesting because we have two bands. We have the blue band and the purple band. So what do these different bands mean? That's the next thing that we're going to learn. Um, when the bands are higher up, like the blue blobby band, that's representing the allele for sickle cell anemia in this case. Um, the lower down purple band that's representing the allele for normal hemoglobin. And if you have two bands, it's going to show that you have both the alleles for normal hemoglobin as well as the band for sickle cell. That means you're heterozygous. Let's take a look at what that looks like written out. Let's focus on lane one first. In lane one, there's the one blue blob or band and um, it's assigned the genotype H prime H prime. What that means is that this person has sickle cell and the allele that we are assigning for the sickle cell gene is H prime. You have to have two alleles for every gene that you have, one from mom and one from dad, right? So the person who is homozygous for sickle cell would have two H prime alleles. If we look at lane three, we can see that that person is homozygous for normal hemoglobin. And the way that we write normal hemoglobin out is using the alleles H with no prime on it. So the individual in lane three would have, be homozygous for normal hemoglobin, therefore their genotype is HH. If we focus on lane six, we can see that that individual has those two bands. And when you have two bands, you're heterozygous. That means you have to have one of each of the different kinds of alleles. So the genotype for this individual will be H, H prime. Hopefully now you understand a little bit more about the process of gel electrophoresis, as well as how to interpret a gel once you've run it out in the electrophoresis box. If you have any questions about this process, please contact your instructor.